Welcome to the show, James Swanick here. Today we are speaking with a gentleman who is 126 days alcohol free. He is a graduated client of our 90 day stop drinking process, which is called Project 90. His name is Robert Walsh. He is a wholesale distribution company owner in Dublin, Ohio. And today we're going to be talking about how Robert went from having a lot of anxiety, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, to a, I guess what he shared previously has been a, uh, maybe a challenging relationship with his daughter in the sense that she knew that he was drinking uh, to where he is today, 126 days later, where he stopped drinking. His relationship with his daughter is now noticeably better. And uh, he says he couldn't be happier. So let's dig in and get the details. Robert Walsh, welcome, sir. Thank you. It's great to be tell, here. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Robert. Well, um, I grew up in Columbus area, Dublin's a suburb of Columbus, Ohio. And uh, I went to Oklahoma for a little bit of time. I worked at uh, Worthington Industries, which is a large cylinder manufacturer, I believe the largest on the planet. So I worked there for 17 years. Uh, very, very nice company to work for. They paid for my education. And then we got an opportunity to start the distribution company in 1996. But we were in the right place at the right time. Uh, it worked out well. And then, you know, from that point forward, you have to, you know, take care of it and <laughs> move forward. So that's where I'm at right now. So it's a family business. That's right. It's a family business that you've had since 96. Correct. And what is it that it does? I know uh, I said a wholesale distribution. What do you distribute? We distribute uh, valves and fittings for LP gas cylinders, propane cylinders. So like your gas grill has a probably a 20 pounder, the valve that goes in that, forklift cylinders, uh, 100 pounders that like um, 100 pounder would be used on a like street vendors use them. And then we're trying to, I'm trying right now to move into Mexico. Mexico uses millions of uh, propane tanks. They don't have as the infrastructure like the U.S. with natural gas lines. So they use usually 30 kilo tanks. And um, there's a number of them. So I want to try to move into that market. And then I have some um, contacts with Worthington's. We also rep the valve account with our supplier to Worthington. But then Ramon Fernandez is the Latin American sales manager at Worthington. And I'm working with him on moving into uh, South America as well. So I hope I can get that accomplished. Got it. So you've had this now in the in the family for almost <clears throat> what does that <laughs> what does that make it now? Almost uh, thirty years. Yes, correct. Yeah. And I would imagine that a family business has its challenges, like family businesses do. I guess, <laughs> like families do, even without the business. <laughs> you had a challenging time with your father being the son and being the heir to the company. Uh, I think our biggest challenge was moving into the 21st century <laughs> um, with remote access and, and things like that. So I have splash top on my laptop and wherever I go, I can access my desktop at the office. And then, you know, I can forward the phone calls to my cell phone, things like that. Um, but your dad <laughs> is that what you're going to say? But your dad cannot. What he can't. He he doesn't like it. He still uses a fax machine. If that tells you anything. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. So as it relates to our conversation here, uh, what have been your drinking habits over the years up until, <clears throat> excuse me, up until, of course, 
about four or so months ago when you stopped drinking? Well, I was, I called myself Norm um, from Cheers, if you're familiar with the TV show, where everybody knows who you are and they know what you're drinking, right? When you walk in the door, but most a happy hour uh, drinker. It was a more of a, I think, a social thing for me, but it, it turned into part of my daily routine, you know, on the way five o'clock was, you know, you've heard the song at five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> um, that was, that was a deal. I never really had alcohol to house. I wasn't a beer drinker. It was uh top shelf bourbons for me. So it was four or five days a week. Um, stopped at the sports bar that's close to my house. Uh, my friend owned it. And so, yeah, it was a it was a bad habit. <laughs> it, it 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 just became part of my daily routine. And if you're sixty one, I would imagine you probably started drinking in your late teens. So that's you know, you're, it's a good 45 year drinking career. Is that accurate? Yes, it's pretty accurate. I did quit drinking for five years. It was before I searched you out. So I, that five year period ended when I was on a business trip and I was fascinated with the, the bourbon, the new bourbon fat i'll call it because alcohol people tend to i mean for a while it was single malt scotches and then it went to you know vodkas and then now it's bourbons and i'm sure it'll move to tequilas if it hadn't already gone in that direction so i stopped for five years but i i ordered a angels envy and then a couple months later i was you know i was back to being norm so I saw your video on YouTube and I didn't skip it. <laughs> so, you know, the rest is history, so to speak, right? I clicked on the, the link and here I am now 126 days. So um, I couldn't be happier. Where does the happiness come from? I referenced your relationship with your daughter. Would you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, my daughter and I are close. I I got divorced when she was two and she stayed with me. Um, I don't need to go into too much detail why she didn't see her mother that much. I, I don't really want to point fingers at her. But yeah, so, you know, that she's 20 now. So we're talking about 18 years. We did everything together. I had season tickets to the Columbus Blue Jackets at local NHL hockey team um her and I went to almost every game I would give some away to customers but uh yeah we did a lot of things together so after the five-year period of non-drinking which was kind of in her teenage prime years she she was disappointed uh she avoided me and it hurt it did. So that was a huge part of the reason I, I needed a group of people to help me out. So I found uh, your program enticing. So I, I did some research and decided that that's where this is where I needed to be. But my relationship now is, is done a complete 180. It's exponentially better. She calls me every day. I where we've been to New York and uh, hopefully I'll get to see Alan the next time I go and Dane, who's part of the group as well. Um, he lives in New Jersey, but he commutes into the city and we went and saw Wicked on Broadway together and we're going back to see, well, she wants to see Wicked again. And then we're going to see uh, Tommy, the Who's Tommy in July. And Dane and I think are going to play golf on Sunday while her friend from New Jersey comes to the city. So I'm really looking forward to that as well. Oh, that's amazing. And uh, if you're listening here on the podcast, if you'd like to see a photo of 
Robert, our guest today on the podcast, and his daughter, then you can go to alcoholfreelifestyle.com slash reviews, and that will take you to our Alcohol Free Lifestyle business profile page. And if you just scroll down uh, from some of the reviews, you'll see Robert Walsh's review there. And and uh, Robert uploaded a photo of he and his daughter. There's a photo of him in New York on uh, the recent trip that he just referenced. And then there's also a photo of Robert uh, in Sedona, Arizona, when he was part of our annual alcohol-free lifestyle in-person event in January of 2024. So yeah, alcoholfreelifestyle.com slash reviews, and you can put a face to the sound, to the voice. Um, so does that mean that when you were drinking, your daughter didn't want to connect with you, but now that you're not drinking, she does. So what were you like or not like when you were drinking? And what are you like or not like now that you're not? Um, well, I think I was closed off um, when I was drinking. And there were most, I don't know, it's tough to describe. I'm, um, I'm a much better person socially when I don't drink. I'm not, I don't have a temper or anything. I just, um, I think I'm pretty introverted, it, which is unusual, but when I'm not drinking, I like to talk a lot. So uh, I, I kind of go in the opposite direction. Um, just my personality changes when I drink. So my daughter didn't like me in in that state, you know, alcohol does bad things to you, which I've learned in this program. That's very interesting, you know, with coach Sarah and coach V, uh, I know Victoria said this group is um, filled up with a bunch of people who are highly intelligent and overachievers and those are the types of people that want to know why we want to know the answers so you you learn some of those things here and it's been beneficial and my daughter just I told her from the beginning you know what I was doing and she's thrilled I'm not afraid to tell anybody I <laughs> some people might be but I uh I was just honest and yeah, so if she texts me or something when we're on a call, um, I'll just or because I turn my the sound off on my phone, I turn the ringer off. But if it's buzzing and I look over and it's her, I'll just type in a quick. You know, I'm I'm on a call right now, lady. Um, I'll get back with you at eight thirty or whenever the call's over. She's on her way home now from Tuscaloosa. How old is your daughter? Twenty. I mean, it's pretty remarkable that uh, a 20-year-old woman wants to hang out with her 61-year-old father, right? It's pretty remarkable that she's wanting to speak with you every day. That must just feel amazing for you, I would imagine. It is. She's a pretty special kid. I, um, there aren't that many teenagers um, that are huge Broadway musical fans either, right? <laughs> right? Um, it's... <clears throat> My ex-wife's mother, her grandmother, took her to New York City when she was, I don't know, she was young, every Thanksgiving, and they would go to the Macy's Parade, and Lainey Kate went to see Broadway musicals, and she really, really liked it, um, so she still does. Yeah. I mean, she was a cheerleader, football cheerleader, and all that, but... Uh, if she I had to give her a choice between um, <laughs> hanging out with her friends and going to Broadway with me, I, I think she would choose Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty nice. Yeah. So your personality has changed from when you were a drinker to now not being a drinker. So what do you think are some of the consequences of you not drinking? Like how has your personality changed? I'm I'm uh, more understanding, I, and I listen better. I you know when you're drinking, you don't pay attention to what the other person's saying. You just want to say what you want to say, 
and you're narrow minded. So I'm, I'm more open minded and I'll listen to what the other person has to say before I make a snap judgment, those types of things. Well, I never mean to anybody. I just, I wouldn't listen. I would say what I wanted to say. I was, it was all on my side and, you know, you're stubborn <laughs> to a fault. So those types of things. Seems like you're now responsive versus previously when you were reactive. I would say that's true. Absolutely. Yeah, let's do a definition of uh, reactive versus responsive. I'll just Google it right now. And I know that this is, well, this is one of the things that we coach folks on in Project 90, our Stop Drinking community. Um, let's have a look here. Responsive versus reactive leadership. I'm just doing a Google search here. So the reactive individual makes a snap judgment. The responsive individual considers the whole picture framed, <clears throat> excuse me, considers the whole picture framed against the company's uh, values, strategies, and tactics. So someone who is reactive is stuck in uh, their emotions. They let their emotions get the better of them. Um, in the heat of the moment, something comes out of their mouths and then a split second later, they're beating themselves up inside and regretting what they've just said or the action that they've taken. Reactive behavior is immediate and occurs without conscious thought, like a knee-jerk reaction. It's often driven by emotion where you may find yourself lashing out, shutting down or fighting. Typically, you behave like a victim of events and are not fully in control. So I'm just reading here from a, a, a Google article. Have you recognized that you've been like that sometimes, Robert? Yes. Absolutely. I, I would agree with that. I, not all the time, but mo I would, yeah, when I was, uh, if I had a couple uh, neat bourbons, I, yeah, I would behave exactly like that. Who with? Who would you be reactive with? Have you got an example or an anecdote of when you identified you being reactive? Oh, I probably did it with my daughter, depending on what the circumstance was. Um, she's she's a really really good student, but I I if if I got on her for like a grade or something, or you know why didn't she do this or that? Um, sometimes. Um, not really well i hate to say i i was short with our warehouse manager and he's been with the company for a long long time in fact he's probably gonna end up being a partner with me but uh yeah i, I wish i wouldn't have done it you know you you say something and then not necessarily at that moment, but, you know, the next day you wake up and you're like, man, I wish I, I hadn't have said that or I hadn't behaved that way. So um, sometimes with my mother, she asks <laughs> rhetorical questions and she's in her 80s. So I need to be more patient and understand um, that there are circumstances that uh, dictate that. I should be way more patient and understanding of the other person's situation. Well, let's read the definition of responsive, at least on this Google article. It says, on the other hand, people who are responsive rather than reactive are generally calm. They are easygoing and they don't get stressed easily. They take time to think things through, are generally good at planning and looking ahead. They are considered with their responses. They have empathy. Most importantly, they don't take things personally. They can look objectively at situations and not get caught in the emotion of it. They can take ownership, responsibility, and accountability for all the good and not so good things that occur in their lives. They generally have a positive outlook on life, have great relationships, and are well-liked. So what comes up for you when I read the definition of responsive? Uh... Well, I believe in the last 126 days, I've uh, 
probably really turned the corner. It's uh, it's amazing. Well, what you can do when you're you're more focused, and you you don't have a a drug affecting your behavior. Um, I know people have been manipulating their mental state for you know thousands of years, but uh, when you step back and you understand that, I mean, you give you give it up the alcohol, but I didn't know a lot about what alcohol did to your brain. I, I just thought it made you behave poorly. I didn't know that it was, uh, it was that powerful. I, we learned a lot about dopamine and the different levels of, I want to say like, I was shocked that a bourbon or two would give me a bigger dopamine hit than taking my daughter to a world series game like 10 times more and it i was i was like wow um so i'm i'm super happy i people notice as well my mother notices my daughter notices uh, my sister my brother doesn't drink either so i think part of that um people don't want to be around you when you're when you're drinking and that hurt my feelings. I, um, I didn't feel good. And I, you know, I, I felt like I had no choice. I, it was something that I had to do. It was necessary. And I, I'm not going to go back there again. Like I said, I, I didn't drink for five years. I'm not sure why I picked that bourbon up, but I did. So there's, there's really no sense in going backwards and beat myself up over it. Another thing I've learned in this program is uh, there's not much you can do about the past. You need to move forward. So, and we, you know, we're reading, letting go and, and um, learning a lot of new things. So, and even at its 61, I guess you can teach an old dog new tricks after all. An older dog, not an old dog, just an older one. Right. (laughs) You referenced at the beginning that you were drinking uh, top shelf bourbon, uh, single malt scotch. I didn't. Well, I did drink single malt scotches. Um, never got. Never liked vodkas um, when that craze was in. But part of the reason I picked up the bourbon was that it, it seems like different alcohols running cycles and you know celebrities are promoting different alcohols so uh, during the single malt scotch era i don't know who somebody had one i don't know who it was you know matthew mcconaughey has a bourbon and i think uh i don't know who now has a tequila i think the rock has one so that you know they they put some celebrity out there and you know like and you know, tequila is going to be the new gig and they always put somebody. So then bourbons got really popular. And I was like, what's the big deal over uh, bourbon? I, before the bourbons, I was a, more of a tequila drinker because we, we have a place in Puerto Rico, Mexico. And we would go down there for a month at a time. So I drank tequila, but then and if you get a really, really nice and extra new tequilas or taste like whiskey, I guess they age them in oak barrels. But so yeah, I uh, I had one. You know, I was out to dinner and I I didn't think anything about it. I didn't I didn't really think it was going to be that big of a deal. And then at so you have the one and nothing bad happened. So the next time you go, you'll say, well, okay, well. I'll have another one. And then before you know it, you're norm again and your life goes to hell in a handbasket. I, um, I, I functioned okay, but never really felt good. Does that make sense to you? I, mm-hmm. I, even at work, we, we still did okay, but I didn't on my recent trip, I just went to, 
uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. It's International Expo, and it's the largest show in our industry for the year. And I hadn't been in a decade because uh, I just didn't care. I was apathetic. So I went to Charlotte this year after joining the program, and I met three or four people, um, two of which are the South America deal and the other in Portugal. And then we also, I'm working on a project with uh, a company in Istanbul. So, you know, you go from being complacent and satisfied to potentially um, hitting Europe and South America in a short period of time. Uh, I hope it works out. I, I don't see any reason why it can't. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm working on. It's exciting. It's fun. I mean, it's challenging. And I guess you're always semi uh, afraid, I guess, of the outcome because you want it to su you want to succeed and grab a hold of the revenue. Um, but it, it's a lot more fun. My job is so much more fun now than it used to be. It used to be a job. <laughs> now it's uh, it's part of my life. I don't know. Does that make sense at all? Yes. What was something profound that you learned inside of the 90 day stop drinking process that you were unaware of before? You did just uh, briefly reference you didn't realize how damaging alcohol was, but was there something that you learned about yourself or something in particular that was profound for you during your 90 days with us? Well, one thing that stuck with me was the, that I, you, you mentioned it and it was either, I think it was on a call. Um, it was either on a call or in one of the lessons that uh, there's a, a gap. It was like 15 to 20 minutes, like when we had cravings, right? If you had a craving or if you felt like having a drink, that there was a um, 15 to 20 minutes and then it would go away. And I had a day like that. And I just kept telling myself, you know, 15, 20 minutes, um, it, it'll go away. Go, you have to, you know, go for a walk, uh, do whatever. That was huge. Um, the other one that stuck with me and I would get emotional about was a call with Sarah and where she was explaining um, some of the negative effects of how alcohol affects your brain and that going back to drinking or sticking with it wasn't, she said, it's not your fault. And, and I had a hard time dealing with that. I mean, you blame yourself big time for, you know, um, I, what I would consider a mistake. And that, that stuck with me. It's not your fault. And <laughs> uh, I'm still having a hard time. Um, I, I have to work on that, I suppose. But uh, we're getting there slowly but surely. I, that's why, you know, I, I committed to this for the whole year from day one. I didn't wait until the end of the 90 days. We'll join from the beginning because I had stopped for five years I'd, and it wasn't a, I knew I could do 90 days. That wasn't a challenge really like because I quit for five years. So it was more of a um, improving my life decision, which is exactly what this program does. <laughs> I mean, it's not just about secession from alcohol, which is, one of the best things about it it's about endless possibilities endless possibilities i like that 
did it feel like there were restricted possibilities when you were in a different phase of life and now it feels like there are endless possibilities yes we have a different perspective and you know you um you stay you finish the call that you send the email uh, you do the the one extra thing every day when before it's you were dying to get out of the office or finish the day uh, so you could go see your friends at the dub pub and now uh i'll i'll make the extra call i'll send the extra email i'll take some time to do a little extra research on uh where and where we i think we can go to next so it's um it's fun it's enjoyable it work goes from being mandatory to voluntary <laughs> mm. yeah so the family business felt mandatory and now it feels voluntary. So now you're free to behave and act in a way that feels really nourishing for you. It is. It's It gives you a great deal of satisfaction and a, and a and sense of accomplishment. Um, <clears throat> you... when you start a project and it's successful and we haven't got to the end of these two projects, but I, I feel confident that, uh, that we'll succeed. I, I do have friends in Mexico that I would probably hire or at minimum take with me <laughs> to Mexico city. I want to see Teotihuacan. That's kind of a bucket list item that I want to go see. So um, Amex Gas is in Mexico City and Teotihuacan is right outside Mexico City. So, you know, we could combine the two, but my Spanish isn't isn't nearly good enough to go negotiate with, uh, unless they speak English, which 90% of them do. But yeah. And I'm also looking forward to uh, any possible trips. The Grand Hall, who we represent, um, their general manager promised me a trip to Taipei. And my brother actually lived in Taipei for a while. And he owes me a trip to Taipei. It, it's, it takes about as long, though, to get there as it, it takes to get to your place in Australia. <laughs> That's a 22 hours to get to uh, Taiwan. So you're now continuing the journey with us. You've left our Project 90 program and now you've joined our Beyond 90 community and program. So have has there been a mindset shift from you from day 90 to where you are today, at least as we're recording this, which is on day 126? Like, Do you see it as the end of one part and the start of another? <laughs> excuse me i'm sorry listeners i've been a little bit under the weather so i'm sorry for the little coughs and sneezes here um did you get that question robert i did i i kind of equate it to a a book right so the the first 90 days is like the first chapter in in the book so i've i've turned the page and i'm in the next chapter now so um the the P90 program is outstanding, but I think um, the best way to describe it for me was if you're, you know, if you're reading a really good, like Dan Brown novel, mm. you get to the end of the chapter and you're dying to see what happens next. So instead of putting the book down and going to sleep, you just turn the page and keep going. Mm. That's how I feel about the, this AFL program that y'all started. Oh, that's beautiful. 
And yeah, to the listener, if you want to see Robert talk a little bit more about his experience, you can also go to alcoholfreelifestyle.com. You don't have to add the slash reviews to the end of the URL. And if you scroll down on our website there, you'll see a video with Robert amongst four or five other of our clients um, filmed in January 2024 in Sedona, Arizona at our annual event. And you can just see Robert sharing a little bit more on camera about his experience. I love that. So a Dan Brown novel, huh? So it's it's all getting very exciting. We don't know where the story's going, but it's a page turner is how it feels. Is that right? Correct. That's how I describe it. <laughs> I love it. And we've got some great characters in there as well. We've got your 20-year-old daughter. We've got a fellow Beyond 90 member, Dane, who you might be playing golf with, as I understand it, this weekend. Not this weekend. It won't be until July. And okay. then I believe Alan, who was uh, also in P90, is uh, he works for Google. He lives in Manhattan, so perhaps we'll get to see him as well. But I, I plan on Dane and I are I'm I'm really fond of everybody in the group, to be honest. And I was fortunate enough to make the trip to Sedona early on and in this uh process and I, I i feel uh very fortunate that i you know that i got that email and, and fortunately uh i have reasons to go to almost any state we sell our products in every state in the united states um, parts of canada um actually one heister in dublin ireland my dad's grandparents are from Ireland, so um, it's uh, it's a pretty good deal, yeah. <laughs> and then you'll be coming to our 2025 event, possibly in Medellin, Colombia, right? In January, you're planning on coming to that. I I already have reservations at the <laughs> hotel. <laughs> there you go. Well played, sir. Well played. And of course, Christina is another client that is based in Manhattan, who's a, car a carriage driver. In oh, that's Park. right. I I am going to get a hold of her and, and Lainey Kate and I will definitely go see her. Mm. Amazing. Well, I'm so happy that uh, the last 126 days have been so enjoyable for you and that uh, your life is a page turner. Absolutely. It seems like you are living a very adventurous life, traveling around with great connection with your daughter, great connection with uh, new friends and uh, ready to take over the family business, not out of obligation, but maybe just out of joy and, uh, and fulfillment. At least that's my impression. Um, that's an accurate description. I, I agree with that. It's a, it's, yeah, it's exciting. I, you know, even at uh, age 60, it's, um, it's enlightening the possibilities when you well, you just feel better in general I you know I used to fear evenings um because I knew I had to get up early in the morning I, I would fear the morning and I didn't sleep well I I would go to bed earlier but I wouldn't feel rested now I go to bed later at night but I sleep for an entire seven hours. Wow. So if I go to, if I watch a ball game or something and it ends at 10, I can go to sleep. I'll be up at five, but I'm, I feel like a million dollars when I was drinking, you know, you'd wake up at two, then I'd panic and I wouldn't be able to go back to sleep. So, um, it's, it's just immensely better. My golf game's way better. I don't, I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, I'm, I love to play golf. It's my favorite hobby. And the, uh, you cannot golf if you drink. I did. I, I very, I wouldn't drink a lot on a golf course, but my golf teachers told me, he said, um, six beers. And a lot of people drink beer on a golf course. I mean, Ironically, my daughter is the beverage cart girl at the golf club where I play. Uh, but six beers will negatively affect your round by eight to ten strokes. Mm. And that's a lot. That's a lot. 
it is it, eight to ten. Yeah, especially if you're what's if you're a single digit, you know, eight shots is you know you go from you know eighty to ninety, eight to ten, then. It's because your hand-eye coordination is gets messed up, right? You can. <laughs> there's, a, there's a there's a a fellow client of yours, Steve Wilt, who spoke at our event in January. Uh, for the listener, if you'd like to learn about Steve Wilt, he's a fifty-something financial services manager out of Akron, Ohio, and uh, you can see his story at alcoholfreelifestyle.com slash Steve Wilt. Steve Wilt. And he said that as a result of stopping drinking, his golf game has just improved out of sight. Like didn't take any more lessons, didn't work on his swing, didn't do anything else except just stop drinking. And he's shaved shots off his, off his rounds. Pretty incredible. I, yeah, that didn't shock me at all. And I met Steve and he does live in Akron and he's a member at Firestone Country Club. And I, I plan on calling him shortly. Um, he invited me up there. I was like, um, if I don't know if any of the listeners are golfers, Firestone's a pristine golf course where they used to have the World Golf Championship. And they moved it from there now, I believe. But it's, it's a, uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful place and it's very difficult track, but so I was excited when I met him. Uh, but he, yeah, he's right. You're, uh, and you, you have to, to be good at anything you have to practice, right? So my golf instructor always told me to practice with a purpose, right? So when I go practice my game now, I always, I'm working on something, but you're practicing with a purpose instead of it just going and hitting 200 golf balls, you focus on something that you've learned and then you apply it to your game. So I, I think Nick Saban, I think there might be a video out with Nick Saban compares life to golf in that you're, you know, You'd have to watch it. I, I believe it was Nick Saban. So you're you're focusing on you know the one hole or your your game. And if you have a bad hole, it, it might have been something out of your control. You might have made a mistake, but you have to put it behind you and focus on the next shot. So it's uh it's an interesting uh metaphor i suppose golf <laughs> in life right um it takes it takes a lot of work to be good at it and sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't you sometimes you know things pop up that are unexpected and you have to deal with it and and move forward you can't you can't harp on things that uh negative things that have happened to you um the book we're reading now, uh, Letting Go, is very interesting. Uh, David Watt Hawkins, it's it's pretty deep. You, <laughs> I may have to read it four or five times to totally grasp it. Um, but I'm thrilled that we're doing it. And it's that Tuesday night is a, uh, here's the other thing about this program. It's, I look forward to it. Like Saturday mornings, it's a, spe it's a hybrid call. So there's a lot of people on there. And then Sunday fun days. And just, I believe it was yesterday, I, I sent Sarah a message and I said, could we, I was thinking, could we have like a free association day where people just chat amongst each other? And, and then I checked my calendar and it was, uh, community connection night brilliant i i was like that is fantastic I, I was overjoyed that and i don't know who came up with that idea but it was a great idea and i i think uh she asked at the end if we would be in favor of having more of them and i said yeah absolutely um when you're in a program with people and you i mean i was lucky enough to meet a lot of people in person 
but uh, you become emotionally attached to them. So, you know, you're accountable to the group and I, I think you become friends. So it, it's fun to get on. I, I called them Saturday morning cartoons I, because I remember when I was a kid, you know, cartoons weren't on during the week. You had to wait till Saturday morning, right? And then you got to watch cartoons and then you had to wait a whole week. It's not like today, you know, you flip on the Disney channel and, you know, nonstop watch cartoons for 24 hours. So, yeah, I like it. And the book night's really fun. Um, and the community connection was just outstanding. It was an, that was a really great idea. Thank you. Yeah, Robert's uh, referring to coaching calls that we put on for our clients inside of Project 90, Beyond 90, and our other program, Leadership. We had a community connection call the other night for 90 minutes where we invited all the clients just to come and have fun. We weren't coaching them on how to stop drinking. We weren't coaching them on leadership or conscious communication or anything. We were just said, we just said, let's have some fun and get to know each other. And it seems like it was a big hit. And uh, I'm thrilled that you're finding so many personal connections out of the process. It's not just about learning how to stop drinking alcohol. In fact, once you complete your 90 days, you realize that it was really not about quitting alcohol. It was about all the other things in your life that you were maybe procrastinating on or suppressing <clears throat> or ignoring that you now get to face, accomplish, do, be, and uh, live a life of health, wealth, love, and happiness. And you've certainly been doing that, Robert, and I appreciate you for your uh, support of other clients, for being so engaged. And uh, I acknowledge you for the journey that you're on. Keep up the great momentum, sir. And thank you so much for being here and sharing some time with us on today's episode. No problem. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.